Hi everyone and welcome to Lorain County Community College. My name is Ron Yachts and we'd like to welcome you to Studio Sessions where every once in a while we like to bring you inside our studio, highlight some of our students on campus, our professors, our programs, and even our performances of Stocker Center. And that's where we're at today. Uh, we have two classically trained saxophone artists with us and they will be performing in the Cerigliano Theater, the Black Box Theater inside Stocker Center. They're the first of six signature series performers brought to our campus by our composer, our distinguished professor, our composer Jeffrey Mumford. So we're going to introduce our duo and to my far right is Sarah Marchitelli and to Sarah's immediate left and my right is Jake Swanson. Hi, and you guys are called us. Jake and Sarah, right? That's right. Yeah. So, welcome to Lorraine County Community College. Thank you. It's Thank really you so nice much. to be here. Identify to everyone what you're holding in your hands. These are our saxophones. This is a soprano saxophone. And this is an alto saxophone. Now, you two are here to kick off the signature series. And just to give you a little history on what that's about, our distinguished professor on campus in music composition is Jeffrey Mumford. His compositions have been played in venues all across the world, some of the world's mm -hmm. most famous. And he has put together a series of six where, we, where he brings in artists, and you two are the, uh, the, uh, the lead-off hitters, so to speak. You'll play his music composition. You'll play, Dr., uh, you'll play Jeffrey's, and you'll play Dr. Oh, Beckstrom's? I'm playing uh, Jeffrey Mumford's. So you're going to play yeah. Jeffrey Mumford's, <laughs> and you'll play Dr. Beckstrom's. Right. Uh, Dr. Beckstrom is, of course, our Dean of Arts and Humanities on campus. So how excited are you to be here and to, to do something fresh and new? We're thrilled to be here today, and um, we're really excited for tonight's event specifically. We've been in the Cleveland area a few times this month, and we've been playing concerts all fall, but tonight is our only new music concert of, of the fall, and um, we're really excited to be presenting that, and specifically to be presenting the compositions of two local and such distinguished composers. Now, Sarah, have you met either Jeffrey Mumford or Dr. Beckstrom yet? We have not met either of them yet. Um, I've corresponded a lot with Jeffrey Mumford just over email, um, so I kind of feel like I know him already, but this will be the first time that we've ever met in person, and I'm really excited about it. He has, um, as you said, a really outstanding reputation, so I'm really happy to be meeting him. You know, we talked about Mumford's reputation. Dr. Beckstrom composed his own opera a year ago called Job, and uh, it was... Uh, it was wonderful. So it's, it's neat that you guys are going to get a chance to meet those, those two tonight. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Let's start with you, Sarah. You're, you're holding a saxophone. How long have you had a saxophone in your life? <laughs> um, I started playing saxophone when I was nine. Um, I decided that, you know, I'm not sure that a lot of other girls play saxophone, so I'm going to give it a try. And then it just kind of stuck, and I really liked it ever since. Um, so yeah, I play mostly alto saxophone, but sometimes I play other voices as well. But this is the one that I've had for the longest amount of time. Jake? Um, I started when I was 10 with the school band, just like Sarah. Um, I had played clarinet. I started clarinet very young in second, in second grade. Um, but I've uh, been with the saxophone for all, most of my life now. So both of you are 27. Yes. Uh, and uh, even though you both look like you could still be in college. Um, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> how long have you actually been a duo? And, and how did that whole thing start for you? How did the Jake and Sarah classical saxophone duo uh, presentation start? Sure. Do you want to speak to that? Sure. Um, the duo actually started almost right away. Sarah and I met when we were still in high school. Um, there was a, a prospective student event at SUNY Fredonia, and we were both interested in studying with the professor there. And um, then we re-met again at college orientation, and then again on the first day of school. And we were assigned to be in a student chamber ensemble together. We were in a saxophone quartet together. And we, um, we played duos almost immediately, um, in addition to the quartet. And we took the quartet very seriously for uh, five, six years, mm -hmm. like all through our undergrad and then through grad school as well. Um, and as, as our friends and our colleagues were graduating and moving away and pursuing, uh, pursuing their lives outside of chamber music, we decided to make a go of it with the duo. There is some really standard uh, repertoire for the duo, but uh, for saxophone duo, but it's usually played by solo uh, performers collaborating with somebody else. And they're very happenstance performances, and um, I, there were very few uh, people who are, are long-term duos. 
And, and so we decided to kind of give a go for it in 2011. Um, we, we started by booking some concerts. We had a concert in New York on a small series, and then in Rochester, um, another one, a little candlelight series. And we've just been slowly gaining momentum for the past four or five years. Starting to move mm -hmm. west. Yeah. Um, yes. Go yeah. from New York to Ohio. You had mentioned SUNY Fredonia, it's State University at New York of yeah, Fredonia. Yeah, State University of New York at Fredonia. And, and that's where both of you are from. It is. Yeah, it's that's on Lake that's Erie. where right. that, yeah, yeah, that's where we both went to school for our undergrad and our graduate degrees. Um, and that's where we still live. So Sarah, what drives you to drive to Lorain County Community College to perform for an hour? in our theater or to Cleveland to be on WCLV radio and perform or to go to a, a small church like both of you have mentioned that you've performed in. Is it the passion and love that you have for the, the, the musical instrument that you hold in your hand? Absolutely, yeah. We, you know, we really love performing and especially on saxophone. Classical saxophone is not something that you see very often and so we really like to bring it to new audiences, um, people who may not know that uh, this side of the saxophone and um, you know it's, it's really a joy to bring that to people. You're both teachers, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So tell me about your careers outside this. Let's start with you, Jay. Sure. I teach high school band at Gowanda Central School District in upstate New York. I also maintain a small private studio at the Infinity Visual and Performing Arts uh, in Jamestown, New York. And I teach for the New Horizons program at SUNY Fredonia, which is uh, continuing ed and senior citizen. Group. So you have taken your passion for music and taken it into a school setting to hopefully inspire other young future musicians. As yeah, well. you know, it seems like a really natural thing to do as a musician because it's with great teachers and, you know, our cheerleaders that our own passion is born and that is what propels us, uh, propels us onward. And so it's a really um, important thing, but also I feel for me it's a vital thing to, to get back there and, uh, and not, not only give back, but it, like, it, fuels, it fuels me as well to, to uh, feed off of their, the young enthusiasm from my students. Sarah? And then um, I teach a lot at Infinity Vision Performing Arts. Um, that's a, a performing arts program, after school program, mostly in Jamestown, New York. Um, and that's where Jake said he has a few students there as well. Um, I teach woodwind lessons, uh, music theory, and steel drums, and some other classes there. And then I also, I'm an um, adjunct professor at the State University of New York at Fredonia. Now, in a little bit, we're going to take a break and we'll get you guys up to actually, you know, play some music for us. But before we do that, can we get a little bit of a tease? Can you just stay seated as you are? Sure. Just, uh, you know, and, and describe, you know, again, your saxophone is quite small. It is. This is a soprano saxophone. Um, it's from the 1930s. And it's a, it's a curved instrument. Frequently, we associate soprano saxophone with that. Is that the metal clarinet? It's a very uh, it's a straight instrument. Kenny G plays one most famously. But if um, a lot of jazz musicians, John Coltrane, they're, they're really iconic, that straight saxophone, that straight soprano. This, um, the curved models were actually really popular in the early life of the saxophone. And they're regaining some popularity now. So this is the soprano saxophone. And your saxophone, have and you had it since you, since you were nine when you first started no, playing? No, I haven't. This, um, this instrument I've had actually uh, not for only a few years. Um, I have been playing, I've been playing an alto saxophone since I was nine, but this particular instrument, which is also like Jake's from around the 1930s, I've had for a few years now. Um, and this is the alto saxophone, one size uh, bigger than the soprano saxophone in the saxophone family. Um, and I'll just give you a little something how this sounds. Both of the sounds, and hopefully our, our the acoustics in our studio, uh, you know, do it justice. It sounds it sounds wonderful. What's well, the first you. thing you ever learned to play? Uh, the first thing I ever learned to play was Hot Cross Buns. Yeah. <laughs> that's a classic. Yes. It, is, it is a classic. The note B. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. Can you play Hot Cross Buns right now? I sure can. 
Now, do you think your mom and dad still go to sleep at night hearing hot cross buns? <laughs> yes, probably very loudly. <laughs> <laughs> and you? First um, thing ever? Well, I, I think we all start with that, that pattern. Like Mary had a little lamb, uh -huh. so you so know, give us the a little, same, give those us a same little, little, little three, uh, three notes that you learn on recorder. Uh, now, my kids have this. My my children, when they were in elementary school, they would come home with this thing called a recorder, mm -hmm. and and it was just you know it's like a plastic pipe basically and it's got the holes in it and they learned how to play hot cross buns and Mary had a little lamb and all those things and I asked you the question about your parents because I still go to sleep at night hearing those <laughs> those sounds but um, it, 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 this love for music really does start at a tender age doesn't it it does it um, does and it's really inspired by I think a lot of times by music teachers when you're so young I think the elementary school music teacher is so important in inspiring and uh, growing that love of music we're going to take a, a short break, um, and when we come back during the break, we're going to get you guys up. We'll bring your music stands out. Do you have the composition pieces that you're going to play tonight, or will we, will we just yes. play some of Okay, so maybe we can play a little of Jeffrey Mumford, a little bit of Dr. Uh, Beckstrom, and a little bit of whatever you want to play. And uh, I may even ask you to see if... Uh, you know, you guys can play any of the big man from Springsteen and the E Street Band. Do you know any of, do you know any of Clarence Clemens? And, uh, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. It'll all be a surprise, and it'll be fun. So come back and, and, and hear more from Jake and Sarah right after this break uh, in studio sessions. Welcome back to Studio Sessions, and of course we're inside our studio here on the campus of Lorain County Community College with a classically trained uh, saxophone duo, Jake and Sarah. And uh, last we left them, we got to learn a little bit about who they are and where they're from, and now we're going to listen to them play the great music that they've uh, worked so hard their entire life to be uh, trained to play and to do it in a way that it sounds simple and easy, when in fact it, it truly is not. So. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Jake and Sarah. And why don't we start off by asking you to, you know, what you'll play. Let's, let's start with that. Sure. This piece is called Ulterior Motives. It's by a uh, young composer, Andrew Cote. Um, it was originally composed for the Blackwater duo, but um, he arranged this version for us for soprano saxophone and alto saxophone. It's usually for um, two altos. Um, and so we're going to play, uh, this is one of the pieces that we're going to be playing tonight on the concert. I think it has an interesting message and idea. This being a new music concert uh, tonight, the, the title, Ulterior Motives, actually um, stems from a, uh, an instance where he was staying with friends of his, and it was actually the Blackwater duo who this was written for, and he had read in the New York Times, right? Mm -hmm. It was in the New York Times, there was an article about how um, these young performers are giving young composers an outlet, and they're all helping each other move forward. So they didn't ask for the piece or anything. He just wrote the piece for them as an ulterior motive to help him move forward. So they're, they're close friends. They're, uh, it's a, you know, sort of a joke of a title. But everybody, uh, everybody moving each other forward. So nice. Good luck. Thanks. Do you guys Thank need you. a countdown or anything? <laughs> yeah, if you'd conduct, that'd be great. Yeah. No, we're all, we're, we're all right. <laughs>
Very nice. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Take a breath. Holy smokes. <laughs> Your cardio has got to be outstanding. <laughs> now, there's. tell me about being a duo, because watching the body language of you two during that, uh, you know, you would, you would look up often at Jake, and it's almost like, you know, a quarterback looks over at his receiver uh, when they both notice a certain defense, and they know without saying a word where exactly – the receiver's going to go and where the quarterback's going to throw the ball. And, and you guys as a duo, I mean, that has to take time, doesn't it? That, that relationship that you two have as you're playing a piece like that? Yeah, definitely. definitely. And that's a good analogy. Um, but they yeah. learned that from us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, when you're playing music you know, without a conductor, yeah, you have to kind of um, communicate with each other and kind of conduct each other a little bit. And, you know, so um, looking up at Jake helps me, you know, realize where he is. And we also give um, gestures with our body about, like, where the beat is and things like that or, um, you know, cueing into a certain section, things like that. And um, so we've kind of cultivated that throughout not just our duo playing together, but like Jake said when we were in the quartet, um, you know, just learning to play with someone else. And there are whole studies in that sort of... Step um, up into the light, sure. Jake. Oh, Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> that, that in movement in music and movement and dance and like Dal Crow's Eurythmics and, and uh, Eurythmy, which is like so strong in the Waldorf education. And, um, and we actually took a course on uh, Eurythmics in, in college and I feel like that was an extremely helpful, uh, helpful event to our chamber playing, just that physical communication. And also it's important as you're playing music to be feeling the meter in the same way and to be, um, and to be really understanding the same the same characters and the same uh, finesse in the music. So having played together so long, it's um, it's easy to play with somebody after you've played with them a long time. You you both worked very hard during that piece. I mean, I don't know if, if you can see the the sweat on the, you know the brow of of, of, of Jake, but um, so. Are there any signatures to a saxophone player, like for example, a violin player will have because of all the work and all the practice, will have a mark, you know, basically here on their neck. Uh, a, a person who plays guitar will have, you know, calluses built up on their fingertips that they could have, you know, nails driven through their fingers, <laughs> and it wouldn't even happen because they're so hard. Is there? I mean, can you guys like break walnuts with your jaws because yeah. they're so strong from from having to keep that that certain, you know. What's the this signature muscle, of a saxophone? This muscle play? in here yeah, becomes right really here. overdeveloped. <laughs> um, as far as the hands, you can see the this thumb on your right hand, it bubbles up because it gets a big callus, kind of the same as a guitarist. And then the, the teeth get pulled out a little bit. So all of this all of this moves forward and gets strong. But but you can't uh, tell from far away. Not like mm -hmm. the violin hick hickeys. I'm glad they have those. Not us. <laughs> Obviously, you both have a lot of passion for what you do. But how how much work, Sarah, goes into getting to the point where you two are at today, where you can sit here and play a very detailed piece um, seamlessly and, you know, with, it makes us 
feel like, wow, that was nice. And, and when you don't notice things, that means you've done it well and easily, but it's not easy, is it? How much work has gone into getting to your point? Yeah, well, that's the whole idea is to make it, when you get to a performance, to make it seem easy to just have the music communicated and not, oh, they look like they're really struggling up there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so probably when we were undergraduates, you know, um, doing our degree programs and everything, we were probably practicing about three to four hours a day individually and then rehearsals on top of that. Um, now we probably practice together together just about every day, an hour to two hours a day together, and then we do um, things separately by ourselves as well. So um, oh, I, oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No, I like to use the analogy with my students when they want to know why they can't get something right now. It's more like farming than anything else. Like you have to plant the seeds, but it takes time. You know, it's not, it's not four hours to being able to play this. It's, it's a, a pattern of behavior and really nurturing you gotta that cultivate it. Yeah. exactly mm -hmm. for over a long period of time and then and then things aren't so aren't so um, daunting before mm -hmm. I ask you to to play another piece um, I want to know your musical interest I'm, I'm intrigued by that um, when you're in the shower singing or <laughs> riding down the road on a three-hour drive back from Elyria Lorain County Community College to Fredonia what type of music do you listen to? Are you a button pusher? Do you put in a CD or, you know, what is it for you, Sarah? And then, then Jake will, uh, will ask you the same question. Sure, yeah, well, I do like to listen to a lot of classical music. Um, I like a lot of classical radio stations in the area, they tend to be really nice. Um, we get a radio station out of Buffalo that's really good, and then um, WCLV in Cleveland is really nice. We can listen to that. Um, I also like folk music. I like some, um, uh, like alternative music. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Yeah, and then also on the way in today, we were uh, discussing and listening to, we loved uh, new music. And so we were listening to the music of David Del Tradici, who's a, a modern day composer. Um, and, and we like to pick composers and then glob onto their, uh, their body of work and then just listen through all of it and really get the character and the feel of somebody's writing. Were either of you inspired by a family member? I mean, did you walk around the house as a young child and your parents play classical music? Did your father play a musical instrument? Was he a band instructor as well? I mean, was there a, is there a connection there? Uh, my dad played guitar, but um, it just in you know the folky rock sense, he doesn't read music. But um, but I I would say I grew up in a household that really nurtured that. Yeah, and um, I have um, my aunt and uncle are actually professional musicians. Um, so I don't know, maybe I was influenced a little bit by that. So yeah. We're going to ask you to play one more piece. Um, I'm going to ask the. Uh, our director Adam Musco to tell me how much time we have left and while, while we're figuring that out how, what will you play? Tell me about uh, your next piece. So this piece is called Initial Impressions um, by a composer that we know very well, Dan Knorr. He's um, currently a graduate student at um, State University of New York at Fredonia and um, he wrote this piece specifically for us. Um, so we've gotten to work a lot with him um, in yeah, uh, we've played a little bit for him, and then he went back and reworked some things that worked or didn't work, and things like that. So it's really nice to be able to collaborate that closely with the composer. We've got about four and a half minutes. That's about how long. All this right. Piece so is. Uh, we'll we'll listen to you. We'll say goodbye, and we'll wish you luck. All right. Great, thanks. Here we go. Thank you. 
Sarah Marchitelli, Jake Swanson from Jake and Sarah, leading off the signature series put on by Jeffrey Mumford, our, our distinguished professor in music composition here at Lorain County Community College. They will perform in the Beverly and Joseph Sirigliano Studio Theater, the first of six acts that go from October all the way to April. Thank you two for being here today. Thank Jake, you for having come on, step up into that uh, spotlight much. again. It oh, was thanks. wonderful to meet you. And Sarah, I think I just <laughs> unplugged so my much. microphone. Nice to meet you guys. Good luck tonight. Thank Good luck in school, teaching all those young, inspiring minds uh, for a musical future. And uh, good luck as you guys continue on with your uh, great saxophone playing. Thanks. Thank, Thank you so you. much. All right. That's been Studio Sessions. Join us again inside our Studio Sessions at Lorain County Community College.